Hey first grade, I'm so excited to start our third butterfly observation. You should take out your YouTube workbook and turn to the section of May, the week of May 26. In this section, we'll be working on page nine. That's where we'll write down what we see in the butterfly net. We'll start today by reading a text about butterflies turning into caterpillars. Then we'll watch a short video about chrysalises. And last, we're going to observe and draw what we see in our YouTube notebook. If you need to hit the pause button to go get your YouTube workbook, you should go do that now. Our text today is called I Am a Butterfly, a story about big, beautiful changes. Stories and Photograph by Sally Stone. I am a butterfly. At first, I didn't know I was a butterfly. You know why? Because I wasn't. I was just a teeny tiny egg on a leaf. I sat there for a few days. Then I hatched, but I still wasn't a butterfly. Now I was a caterpillar, a squishy caterpillar with no wings at all whatsoever. That's just like our first observation. We never got to see our butterflies as eggs, but we did get to see them as caterpillars. I munched leaves and grew to be a big caterpillar. Then something really strange happened. I turned into this. I still wasn't a butterfly, obviously, but I wasn't a caterpillar anymore. Nope, now I was a chrysalis. And what's exciting is that's where our butterflies currently are, inside a chrysalis. So let's start listening carefully and noticing what is a chrysalis. Inside my chrysalis, it was really dark. I was scared at first. But then I relaxed in the soft, velvety darkness. I could feel myself changing. Then, one day, light came streaming through my chrysalis. I started to move. And we're not sure exactly what happens next, but I think you probably have a prediction. We'll read the rest next week. But now, we want to listen really carefully and understand more about what's happening inside a chrysalis. What would you do for the power to fly? How about shedding your skin? and dissolving your own muscles. Now, believe it or not, that gruesome process is how caterpillars earn their wings. Here's what you might not know about what's inside a caterpillar's cocoon. Contrary to popular belief, this is not a cocoon. Only certain moths build cocoons, which are like a silky sleeping bag that covers the insect. This, on the other hand, is what's called a chrysalis. It's not a sack or a pouch, it's actually the caterpillar's own body. When it's time for the transformation to begin, the caterpillar's body ramps up production of a hormone called ectosome, and that causes it to cast off its outer coating, sort of like how a snake sheds its skin. And underneath is a hard shell, similar to the exoskeleton of a beetle. After that, life for the little caterpillar gets oozy. First, it releases enzymes called caspases. These rip apart and dissolve cells in its muscles, digestive system, and other organs. But the enzymes don't quite liquefy all of the caterpillar. They leave key structures intact, like breathing tubes. At the same time, specialized cells called imaginal discs start waking up. Before the chrysalis stage, these discs were kept dormant by a series of hormones in the caterpillar's body. But once the transformation begins, those hormone levels take a nosedive, giving these discs the opportunity to do what they do best, build a butterfly. You see, each disc contains the genetic recipe to form a different adult body part, starting from the inside out. After one week, the digestive system of the butterfly is well on its way. And by day 16, the adult's legs, wings, eyes, and mouth are all present and in working order. Now, two weeks is a remarkably short time for all of this to happen, since each imaginal disc starts out with only about 50 cells and must multiply those into thousands just to form a single wing. 
And if you checked out the chrysalis around day 16, you might even be able to see those brilliantly colored wings. Because for some species, their chrysalis turns transparent in their final days of metamorphosis. Now, fully formed, it's time to hit the road. The chrysalis splits open down the center and the butterfly escapes. Meanwhile, a reddish liquid spills out. That's all the waste the butterfly, nay, caterpillar, produced during its stay. Once its wings expand and harden, it's ready to mate, pollinate, and slurp nectar to its heart's desire. But one of the most interesting parts of all, research suggests that butterflies and moths can remember their caterpillar days. In one study, researchers trained moth caterpillars to associate an odor with an electric shock. So whenever the larvae smelled it, they'd move away. But even after they transformed into adult moths, they still avoided the scary smell. It makes you wonder what else they could recall from their younger days. So here are our butterflies. You can see in the butterfly net, which I have on my kitchen counter, this is the lid of the jar. We turned it on its side once they were inside their chrysalis. And that way when they hatch out of their chrysalis, they have room to grow their uh, to dry their wings and flap them till they harden. So now we're gonna get a closer look. Grab your YouTube workbook and let's draw what we see. I zoomed in tightly on two chrysalis on the jar's lid. We're gonna draw what we see today of these chrysalises. Already I noticed these really interesting little spiky bumps down the sides. And they're almost a, a, like light orange color. And then the chrysalis is this pretty tannish gray color. And I see some different stripes and details. A light section here, it's a little darker down here. These are all things that we can add to what we see for our observation drawing. I'm going to start by drawing the jar lid. I just made a big circle. Now I'm going to draw my two chrysalises. I'm drawing the little bumps down the side. I'm back up to the top. And then there's that little brown thing at the top. That's where part of their old body was before they shed their, right after they shed their skin. That helps them attach to the lid of the jar. It's part of their silk pad now. Now I'm adding some of those details that will help me color later. Some sections are a little lighter, some are a little darker, and some are kind of a lightish yellow orange color. So I'll add those details into my picture so that when I add color, once this video is over, it'll be a little bit like coloring in a picture in a coloring book. The next step is I want to label what I see. Many of the words in the word bank we actually can't even use. Now we're going to label what we see. Many of the words in the word bank we won't even need today because these are parts of the caterpillar or the butterfly. And today we're labeling the chrysalis. Well, I can definitely label the chrysalis, that's for sure. Here's the word chrysalis. I'm just gonna copy it from the word bank. C-H-R-Y-S-A-L-I-S. And then I check it off. The other one I can add in is a silk pad because that's what attaches the chrysalis to the lid of the jar so that it doesn't fall down. I'll check that off when I'm done too. And those are labels that I can write for today. My last step, of course, is to write my words. Describe the function of the caterpillar's chrysalis. Remember, function means job. What's the job? of the caterpillar's chrysalis. How would we start our words? Good. The function of the caterpillar's chrysalis is what? 
What does the chrysalis do for the caterpillar while it's changing? Start by writing the. That's a hard word, and I'm going to make it capital to begin. Functions in the question, so I'll just copy that down too. I noticed the T-I-O-N ending. Now I write of and the. Those are two hard words as well. I check them off as I go. Caterpillars. Boy, that's a long word. Good thing I can just copy it from the question. I can't forget my apostrophe S at the end. Caterpillars. And there's the word chrysalis again. The function of the caterpillar's chrysalis. Now I'm going to write the word is to what? You fill in the rest. Make sure to send your work to your classroom teacher. We can share it on class tag. What is the function of the caterpillar's chrysalis? Can't wait to see you next time, first grade, for the super exciting changes that happen with our butterflies. Thanks for doing science with me today.